Welcome everyone to Gower Street United Church here in St. John's, Newfoundland on this second Sunday of Lent. We want you to know that no matter who you are, where you come from, how you come to be here, what you believe or what you are questioning, you are welcome with us in fullness. Just a few announcements uh, for this week. On March 14th, Sunday, March 14th, we will be celebrating Pi Day together. And we would ask that if you have some pictures at home of rainbows, videos, um, or even if you would like to draw a rainbow picture, if you would send them in to Rebecca at the office, and we'd love to display them on Pi Day. Our Lenten newsletter uh, has been sent out, so we ask that you have a read through that. Junior Congregation is meeting now online at 1230 on Sundays, and you need to contact Rebecca for the Zoom link for that. As well, our Lenten pauses continue this week on Wednesdays, and the Family Book Group with Rebecca will continue as well on Wednesday at 7 p.m. We also would like to offer sincere condolences to the Robbins family on the passing this week of Claude Robbins. Claude has been a member of our faith community for many, many years, as well as the men's club. And we do offer sincere condolences to his family and our thoughts and prayers are with you at this time. And the funeral is to take place when the COVID restrictions are lifted again. For the next few weeks, we will be presenting music that will offer the best possible quality always maintaining fewer than the allowable number of persons in the sanctuary as per COVID level five restrictions. So organ volunteers and postludes by Carl will be selected from previous broadcasts that we've had. And weekly service music, that is hymns and responses will be played by David Chafe, who is here with us today and David helped us last year during the first wave of the pandemic. And Doug will continue to lead the singing with occasional assist assistance from Grace. And so we welcome you, David, again into our midst. And so let us sing together throughout these Lenten days and nights, Voices United, number 108, verse two. The pilgrim Christ, the Lamb of God, who found in weakness greater power, embraces us though lost and flawed, and leads us to his rising hour. We invite you to uh, light a candle in your midst and this will represent the christ candle in your home O god of hope on this lenten journey we are looking for you may this candle light remind us that you are here with us as we worship you this day and we make our way through these trying times help us remember you are always near just a prayer away. May this candle remind us that we are not alone. And we also light the rainbow candle acknowledging that Gower Street United Church is an affirming congregation. As we journey together to the cross, we work for justice and peace. And we have lit these five purple candles to mark the journey of lament we make this Lent. A lament for the past as well as the continuing injustice to the indigenous peoples of this land. 
and the need for reconciliation and mending of relationships. We lament the pain, the suffering, and damage that the residential school system caused as it forced assimilation on the, this land's indigenous people. We lament the physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental abuse experienced by too many of the residential school students, acts that cannot, under any circumstances, be justified or excused. We lament the havoc and destruction caused to the indigenous peoples by introducing diseases to which they were not immune. These may be hard things for many of us to name and acknowledge, and yet these actions destroyed indigenous peoples, individuals, families, and communities, and we are all the poorer. But what can we do but weep and wail at the injustice? What can we do but lament the loss and the destruction? What can we do but ask for the courage and will to seek reconciliation? And we light the white candle to honor the indigenous peoples of Newfoundland and Labrador. We acknowledge with respect their history, spirituality, culture, and ways of knowing. We recognize our responsibility as settlers to live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. We acknowledge the continuing injustice and commit ourselves to seeking right relations with all of Canada's indigenous peoples. May the Creator's wisdom work within us toward mending the torn tapestry of this land. And as part of our Lenten journey and as our way forward, we invite you to learn this week about any residential schools in our province, when they were opened and when they were closed, the number of indigenous children who attended, deaths of those children, and other stories associated with those facilities. As we gather, we recognize that a history of a people is not all glory. The history of Canada has both joy and sorrow, both triumph and tragedy. We have much to celebrate, much to lament, and much to dream. Come, let us gather in the presence of God our Creator, Come, let us worship the Creator in whom we and all of creation are one. Come, let us open our hearts in thanksgiving. Come, let us be filled with the Spirit's vision as we worship today. 
and let us pray. O God of shepherd, warrior, and prophet, creator of first peoples, pioneer, and saddlebag preacher, light of immigrant, loyalist, and seeker, we live with history and we love your presence in it. We trace our roots to your creative powers. We embrace one another as children of your spirit. As we celebrate our history today, help us remember all of it, that which makes us proud and that which makes us ashamed, that which reveals our closeness to your word and that which reveals your distance. Remind us of your constant presence, forgiving, restoring, recreating, and making all things new. Help us, Redeemer God, as we dwell for a moment in your goodness. Amen. And let us sing together, Will You Come and Follow Me? Voices United, number 567, verse 1, 2, and 4. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to perhaps the world around? Though my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. morning as we continue our journey through Lent and we look at the faces of Easter. So, in the beginning the baby was born. God chose Mary to be the mother of God. Listen carefully, listen to the words. God chose Mary to be the mother of God, and the Word was born in a word, wordless child. When the baby looked into the face of Mary, he already saw the cross. When the baby looked into the face of the father Joseph, the cross was there too. 
The mother Mary and the father Joseph held the baby very close. They kept the baby warm. They gave the baby everything the baby needed to grow and it began to grow. The baby grew to become a boy, and when he was about 12 years old, he went with the mother Mary and the father Joseph to the great city of Jerusalem to keep one of the high holy days. When the, when the celebration was over, the people of Nazareth went out through the great high gate and started on the road toward home. Suddenly, Mary and Joseph discovered that Jesus was not there. They thought he had been playing with the other children and from their village as they walked together. They hurried back to the great city of Jerusalem to find him. Mary and Joseph looked and looked. They looked down the narrow streets. They looked in the marketplace where they had bought their food. Then they walked, they looked everywhere. Finally, they even looked in the temple and there was Jesus. He was talking to the rabbis and the priests and when he spoke, they listened. And when they spoke, he listened because he wanted to learn more. Mary and Joseph asked Jesus the question all parents ask their children. The question you can never answer, why did you do this? And Jesus said something very strange. He said, didn't you know I would be in my father's house? Mary and Joseph did not understand. Their house was in Nazareth, where Joseph's carpenter shop was. They did not understand, but they did not forget. So in our journey towards Lent, we have heard of Mary and Joseph caring for Jesus as a baby. We have heard of Jesus' experience in the temple as a young boy. And we will continue our journey next week with more faces of Easter. But now it's time to take a moment for Black History Month on this last Sunday in February. And this week, we are going to learn about Harold Moody, who was a doctor, preacher, and lobbyist for social reform. And here is a cartoon picture of Harold. Born in Kingston, Jamaica, Harold was considered a British citizen, like all of the Caribbeans under British rule at the time. He was excited when he was admitted to King's College in London to study medicine. However, in London, where few, where few black people lived, he encountered harsh racism. White Londoners would stare and yell at black people on the street, and some black people were even exhibited in the manner of zoo animals. Harold was denied housing many times, and after he graduated was refused one hospital post because the matron did not want a black man working there. Instead, he opened his own practice where he married Olive Trader, a white nurse, and she told him that she was the traitor to her race. Harold didn't think this was right and started to push back. In his quiet, persistent way, uh, in his quiet persistent way against what was known at the time as the color bar. He opened his house to other black immigrants who needed a place to stay, a job, or a community. He was also deemed as a preacher and challenged congregations that were mostly white to fight against prejudice, but as hard as Harold tried, they could not imagine or empathize with the black people's experience. Harold realized that he needed a more proactive way of making change, so he formed the League of Colored People, 
an organization that would lobby the government and companies to improve their policies towards black people. Other activists thought that Harold was too polite, but his method helped open doors. The League of Colored Peoples lobbied for hospitals to hire more black nurses, for change to be made in how textbooks depicted black people, and for an end to housing discrimination. During World War II, the organization demanded equal treatment for black soldiers and sailors. The League also successfully lobbied for refer reforms in how the United Kingdom governed its Caribbean colonies. Harold was a visionary who was a preacher, doctor, and lobbyist for justice, worked toward a Britain where race didn't hold people back and everyone received a fair chance. So I hope you have a great week with your families and that you join us for Sunday School following worship this morning at 12.30. Jesus, friend of little children, let me be one too. Take my hand and ever keep me close to you. We have heard the words of scripture so often that we assume we know what they mean. We fail to notice the cultural lenses through which we view the stories, the assumptions we make based on what we have been taught. Today, may we receive these words afresh, loving God. May we notice what we have not seen before by the power of your spirit working through these words. Listen, listen, God is calling through the world, inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. And the first reading for the second Sunday in Lent is taken from Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 to 7 and then 15 to 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord, Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abram, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Amen. The Gospel reading for this Sunday is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, 
reading chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of God must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this sinful generation, of them the Son of God will also be ashamed when he comes in glory. Amen. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone feels And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. The more time I spend reflecting on my life and the more honest I am with myself, 
The more I realize that the things I say and do in regards to others and my reactions to particular situations are a whole lot more about me than they are the other person or the situation. I think that is true for Peter in today's Gospel. His reaction to Jesus says a lot more about Peter than it does Jesus himself. It is not too difficult to see and to understand what is going on with Peter. Here he seems scared and he seems overwhelmed by and unprepared for what is coming. Life sometimes does that to each of us. Life brings us stuff that we simply did not sign up for. It takes us to places we never planned or wanted to go. And this year of pandemic, and in particular, this second lockdown that we are in here in Newfoundland and Labrador is definitely one of them. Peter, in this gospel reading, is struggling with his faith. He is trying to make sense of what he really believes. Perhaps he has what it takes to meet the demands of faith in this moment. I have stood next to Peter in my life. Have you? I have known times in my life when I have felt unprepared for what I was facing. I looked down the road at what was coming and I simply did not like what I saw. Haven't there been times when you have felt scared, unprepared for or overwhelmed by life? Haven't there been times when you just didn't want to face what life was bringing upon you? Haven't there been times when you just didn't know whether your faith was up to the demands of your life? Imagine taking a picture, picture of your life in that moment. What would it show? Well, my guess is that Peter would opt for a retake in this gospel. And yet we all have those kinds of pictures in our lives. We have all looked at those pictures of ourselves, pictures that show us to be less than or other than we know ourselves to be or want to be. There is, however, more to us than that one picture or moment can show. So can a single picture really tell the whole story? No. Life is more like a movie an ongoing story that is active, dynamic, changing, and unpredictable. It is not a single static picture which is taken in time. And today's gospel is really just one picture of Peter. Peter takes Jesus aside and rebukes him. Jesus turns and rebukes Peter. You are the deceiver, you are the adversary, you are the tempter. You are out of line, Peter, get behind me. This is not the only picture of Peter which is found in the Gospels. In the Gospel story earlier, Peter is the confessor, and he is the one who recognizes Jesus. You are the Messiah, he says. Those are two very different pictures of the same person. Throughout the Gospels, Peter has conflicting or contradictory pictures in his life. And Jesus has also experienced the conflicting pictures of life. And we too may experience compl conflicting pictures in our own life. Each of us could go back and pick out the bad picture days of our journeys. Yet our life is simply not a single picture. We cannot describe ourselves or our life through a one-time particular event. 
Instead, what if we took those single pictures of life for what they really are? What if we looked at them as simply one moment in time, a single still frame, a single journey that is part of our life's movie? What if that one picture isn't just a final judgment, but simply information about what is happening to us or in us? Information about our fear, our wounds, our hopes, our needs, and our struggles. What if it is just a picture of us at a particular time and place trying to do the very best we could with what we had? At times, life really is difficult. It is overwhelming and it is scary. And often faith really does push us to our limits. Sometimes life really does give us what we never asked for or wanted. What if there is always, though, one more picture than what we often see? It would be easy today to look at the picture of Peter and say that he simply just blew it. He was not a good disciple, he was not faithful, he was out of line when he rebuked Jesus, and he got called out by Jesus. What if Jesus' rebuke of Peter is really Jesus just saying, Peter, that is simply not who you really are. I know you. You are more than what you have in this very moment. Wake up, you are loved. Trust my calling of you and return to yourself. Every picture has more than one interpretation. We can look at those pictures of our life and let them bind us to the past and forever label and judge us or another. Or we can look at them and say, wow, that was a terrible day, an awful situation, an awful time in my life. That is really not me, and it is not who I want to be. We then let those pictures call us back to ourselves, back to our center, back to our original beauty. We let that unwanted picture call us into a new life and a new way of being. And that is what Jesus is doing with Peter today. And it is what he is continually doing with us. Jesus is continually calling us back to ourselves, letting us see ourselves through his eyes, reminding us of who we truly are and who we can become. Most of the time, we look at these pictures and we know we have stepped outside of ourselves. We have betrayed ourselves. We have violated our own integrity. We may feel ashamed, disappointment, or regret, but those are not about punishment or judgment. They reveal that we have touched the darkness within ourselves, but they simply not are our permanent condition. They are the pointers to something else. They are reminders that there is more than can be shown in a single portrait. So what do you see when you look through the album of your life? What are the pictures of your life today that bind you to the past? What pictures have you let define you, your value, or your worth? What are your unwanted picture days or journeys that you try to hide from yourself? They are the pictures that sometimes can tell our secrets and display our wounds. And as much as we might like to hide, delete, or change those pictures, they do have value for us. The very things that haunt us can become our teacher. The very things that we do not want to hear about ourselves 
can become a calling into a new life and another journey. The very things that we do not, do not want to see about our life can show us a different way of being. The pictures of our life always exist in a larger story. No one would buy a ticket to a movie, watch only a single still frame, and claim to have seen and understand the movie. Why would we do that to ourselves or to another? This is certainly not what Jesus does to Peter. The rock that sank in the waters of doubt is also the foundation of the church. The denier of Jesus is also the feeder of sheep. Jesus sees more than the picture of the moment. And that, and if that is true for Peter, it is also true for each one of us. Faith moves us to see the beauty hidden within our disfigurement, the light that shines in the darkness. Faith moves us to see the healing that can come from great suffering. Faith moves us to see the belonging that overcomes rejection, the life that arises from death. And faith moves us to see, especially in these times, the hope that stands amidst de despair, pain, and suffering. And this is the journey to a Holy Lent. This is the road to repentance. That just might be what Jesus meant when he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me. It is not the pictures of our life that define us. It is Christ. It is the love of Christ that sees in us more than we often see in ourselves or one another. And this truly is the good news of the gospel. Amen. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. No one is his neighbor, all alone he eats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. Make me friend or stranger, fit to wait on you. As we gather our gifts, we acknowledge and give thanks for the gifts given. Through the mail, through e-transfer, through Canada Helps, and other online means to support the work and ministry of this faith community, especially during this time of pandemic. We pray with God's blessing that the work of our hands and our hearts support with love and compassion members of our congregation, our neighbors, our community, and our siblings around the world. And so let us sing together the church is wherever God's people, Voices United 579, verse 2. The church is wherever God's people are helping, caring for neighbors in sickness and need. The church is wherever God's people are sharing the words of the Bible in gift and in deed. And let us pray. Gifts we share, gifts it's of time, time. Talent, and talent and treasure. Gifts of the kingdom, gifts that celebrate God is with us. Amen. After I 
graduated from Emmanuel College, I, wa I walked from Emmanuel College uh, up to Barrie where we had our ordination uh, ceremonies. It was 225 kilometers, it took me two weeks and it was an amazing uh, journey of self-reflection and self-discovery. My name is Reverend Jason Myers. I'm the Minister for Congregational Care here at Metropolitan United Church. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, and now I'm a pilgrim. I could no longer set off my call to ministry after our first son Isaiah was born. And in the preparation for his baptism, our minister had me write a letter to him that he would open later in his life. And in that letter I was saying things like, Isaiah, I want you to follow what God has intended for you and I realized that I wasn't doing that for myself. The next day I walked to Emmanuel College to see what this whole ministry thing was about. Something that surprised me now that I've been in the ministry for about a year and a half is I've been surprised at my own capacity to love. I thought that when my kids were, were born, that was, that was kind of the size that my heart would be, but I've come to love this place and these people and the vocation of ministry, and it has been expansive and beautiful, and I'm so thankful that the person of Jesus reached into my life and invited me on this journey with him. What I would say to the donors of the Mission and Service Fund is that it's worth it. The church is alive and beautiful and vibrant and it's worth investing in. And so I would just thank them for their support.
We want to thank you for joining us uh, today for worship, and we do hope that this time for you has been some time of peace and solitude and to invite Christ into your space and into your home. And so let us sing together, Take Up Your Cross, Voices United, number 561, verse 1, 2, and 4. Take up your cross, the Savior said, if you would my disciple be. Take up your cross with willing heart and humbly follow after me. Take up your cross, let not its weight fill your weak spirit with alarm. Christ's strength shall bear your spirit up and brace your heart and nerve your arm. Take up your cross and follow Christ. Think not till death to lay it down, for only those who bear the cross may hope to wear the glorious crown. We walk apart yet together on this Lenten journey. Jesus, our shepherd, walks with us. We are not alone. And may the love and blessing of God our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. I live in beauty, yes I do, yes I do. I sleep in beauty, yes I do, yes I do. I dream of beauty, hey ya, hey ho, hey ya, hey ho. Hey nay ana, hey nay ana, hey nay ana, hey ya. Hey oh, hey ya, uh, hey oh.